all the way down to, for those of you that remember, the Schenkel Cave Project. Uh, basically, that whole section of line will be repaired or replaced. And that is going from, I want to say, about a 12 or 15 inch line to, a, I think it's a 36, it might be a 30 inch line. So there will be plenty of capacity there. The second issue associated with Crestwood is, is it is an older subdivision, been around a long time. Um, the infrastructure is, is predominantly clay. Uh, much of it is in very bad shape. Uh, it does have a lot of inflow and infiltration problems. Once the East Frankfurt project is done, which will be either late this year or early next year, uh, we can still have problems in Crestwood. They should be much less because we've got a place for that flow to go. But in next year's budget, which hopefully will be approved a little bit later tonight, there is a project for us to go in and start doing uh, evaluation and addressing the I and I problem or the inflow infiltration problem in Crestwood. Uh, that project, we already have an engineer that we intend to negotiate with. Um, obviously, we have not begun negotiations because technically it's not a project till July 1st. Uh, but that is probably something that you will see on your agenda hopefully in July is getting that uh, engineer on board to begin doing uh, evaluations. Uh, they'll be doing flow testing, um, cleaning, cameraing, all the standard stuff we do as part of the evaluation. Uh, probably next spring sometime, I don't know obviously exactly when, uh, we would hope that we can award a contract to somebody to go in and actually start doing repair slash rehabilitation slash relining of the lines in Crestwood to get the inflow and infiltration, all the additional storm water out of that uh, sanitary system because it is a separate sanitary. Um, at that point, you know, is when you will actually see significant improvements to what's out there. But the Crestwood area does have a number of, of documented uh, recurring SSOs um, and um, and again, our goal is to not only address those in the Crestwood area, but to address those throughout the system, uh, all the ones that we do know about. So that's kind of it in a, in a nutshell. Okay. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner uh, Hayden. Um, just time frame, how long do you, how many months do you think the whole thing will take? <clears throat> Ooh, I hate that question. <laughs> um, well, I say, we, we hope to get somebody under contract at the end of July, mm -hmm. which means they'll start doing their work in August. Um, obviously, the evaluation type stuff we're doing, unfortunately, is weather, very weather dependent. Um, you know, you, you want it to be uh, a time when you see the flow so you can isolate where the problems are. Um, but ideally, we would hope, I say, to have somebody under contract spring early summer of next year to actually start doing the repair work and that's probably going to be again we don't know how bad the problem is I mean we, we know what we think the problem is until we get in there and do the evaluation we really don't know how bad the problem is but I would hope that that project could be done in three to six months so outside maybe maybe by the end of 2012 Okay, any other commissioner? Uh, commissioner Wilder. Um, thanks, thanks, Bill. Uh, first, I just want to thank Mr. Clark for his, his service. Um, I, I don't think you're asking for any special special treatment at all. We have to speak up. We really thank you for your service and, and don't believe you're asking for any special treatment at all. I think this is a pretty valid concern and uh, I really appreciate you coming in today. Um, I mean, I, obviously, the ideal time to deal with this problem would have been 15 years ago. Um, that that ship has sailed, uh, so the, the best we can do is just get started on it now. Um, to simplify some of what uh, the sewer director just said, uh, there are kind of two phases to this project. The current, the one phase is, is already underway, which is a, a, a project uh, on the east side. And the second phase, specific to uh, Crestwood, it's gonna. I mean, ideally, it would, one other thing. One thing. Sure. 
might be questioning my qualifications or where I stand, but I work for Lewis and Henry Architects. You got him hired right now, working on the courthouse, the architect on the courthouse, for 28 years. Now I know what I'm talking about and what can solve this problem. Great and great or any part of it. He has a construction background sure. and understands the sewage flow. And Thank you. The only thing else I would say is that the Versailles Road project is great, and I think that ultimately that will help, but that's yeah. not going to solve the problem on Beach. I, I, sure. I understand. I understand. But please let us continue with this. Yes. It, it, no, it, it won't solve the problem, but it'll, it'll tee the problem up to be solved by the next project in Crestwood. Unfortunately, it's a very large problem. I wish we could go in and fix it over the weekend. Um, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. I guess uh, two, two things to be aware of. Um, the, well, the, folks have noted the consent decree that we're under. Um, the, having sewage you know, poured into the street and into, into the river is obviously a violation of the Clean Water Act. We were sued by the Commonwealth and are under a court order to mitigate those problems. Um, and that's, that's obviously the problem you're looking at right here. Uh, when the problem is solved, it's going to cause a, so a little more flooding. It'll be clean water, though, or relatively clean. So when we take the sewage out of the equation, that's, there's still going to be some, some more flooding problems, and, to, and, and hopefully that's something we can deal with in the long term. Um, and we've already talked about setting up a stormwater utility or, or some mechanism to help deal with stormwater problems past the sewage overflow problems. But hopefully, in the relatively short term, we can deal with the sewage, and then the, and it's just going to take even longer to deal with the stormwater. Um, for my two cents, I don't really care about the easements. Um, I I don't have any, I, just my opinion. I don't have any qualms about uh, the city using its, its powers to to claim those easements in the interest of public safety, and it really is, runs deeper than public safety because, as has been noted, the con, the consent decree. Uh, we're under the consent decree because of, of legal violations. So it's a matter of both of public safety and of coming into compliance with the law. Um, in all respect to anybody's desire to maybe build a garage in the future, that, that's not as important as having sewage backed up into your basement. Um, I had a, I did have a question. Oh, yeah, and related to that, you mentioned that, uh, I think it was Jeff mentioned that, um, it, it looks like one of the easements may be granted, uh, but the, I guess that was one out of three. So are there still, is, is that still a concern? The downstream property owner uh -huh. where the potential storm drain would be installed, uh, as I understand it, the easement has been filled out and I'm not sure if it's been filed at the courthouse um, to date, I'm not sure. Is, that, is that the only necessary? I easement? believe the owners actually signed the easement. And from what I've heard. Is that the only necessary easement? Or oh, no. There's several okay. to go. There's, they're all around the neighborhood. Sure. I think there was probably 20 or 30 properties that required easements back in the mid-90s. And um, so there's a lot more yet to go. But the critical, obviously, was the downstream property owner. Because without that, you know, if you could build and start build your way from the bottom up, it, it works, but you can't build everything at the top and then flood the downstream property owner. So that one was the very critical uh, signature that we could not get back in the middle 90s. Okay. So it looks like there's some... Well, can you keep us appraised of the, of the easement situation? Because if that is going to be a... a st I mean, obviously, I assume you're going to try and negotiate for, for them and we'll get most of and hopefully all of them. But if you don't, uh, I, I don't... I'd hate to see a repeat of what happened 15 years ago where we had everything lined up and had the money budgeted and, mm -hmm. and we're just gun shy mm -hmm. in terms of pulling the trigger. Uh, let, it, let us know if it comes down to that. So the easements are one issue. I guess the other issue is, you know, putting the project on a list and approving funds to do the project. And I guess that will be more of a long-term uh, project at this point. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, Scout, if you hit something else you want to add. Well, actually, it's, it's just to uh, uh, basically, I was going to say exactly what Commissioner Wilder said. Um, you know, the, the projects that we're doing are only addressing the sanitary. It does not address any aspect of the stormwater. 
Um, and, and one of the things that, that people don't like to hear, but as that storm water is taken out of our system, it's got to have somewhere to go. So, you know, it has the potential, uh, especially during smaller rains, of, of making the situation worse. Because, I like say, if it doesn't go into my sanitary, it's going to find somewhere else to go to. But uh, I just want to make sure that people understood that, you know, this is not, my project does not solve the stormwater issue. All it does is get the sanitary and keeps it in the pipes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I think we're trying to do what we can do. And we do thank you for coming and, and bring this for us. And um, uh, hopefully it's before too long, we'll, this will be resolved to some extent. But our infrastructure, not only in the city of Frankfurt, but it's all across the country. These same, these same types of things are happening. And uh, so I, I wish we'd say more right now, but I don't know what else we can do beyond what we're doing at the present time. We appreciate the commission's time. And what I would ask is that someone attempt to communicate to Mr. Clark the, the goings on and don't just leave him hanging thinking that nothing's being done or no work is being accomplished going forward. I think he's been trying to get people's attention and no one's been listening and and if someone could just communicate with him on a regular basis it would be very helpful. Okay, well thank you so much. Thank you. See this. Okay. Come thank you. Good. Lord, if they can come and look. He okay. really wants to show somebody. Thank you, uh, Mr. Good. Clark. Good. It's good to see you again. Thank you. No, it's a <clears throat> Um, okay, are there any other citizen comments? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the uh, to ordinances and to Mr. Moore. Number 4.1, uh, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2, 2011 series, appropriating the revenue to be received by the City of Frankfurt for the fiscal year 2010-2011. Summary, this ordinance amends the City of Frankfurt budget for fiscal year 2010 to 2011 to include funds to purchase the digital radio system for public safety, net amount of funds, $71,836. Okay, do we have a motion for approval of uh, Ordinance 4.1? Commissioner May, do you have a second? Commissioner Hedden, <coughs> any discussion? Okay, call the roll. Commissioner Wyler? Yes. Commissioner Hedden? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. Mayor Graham? Uh, yes, so Ordinance 4.1 is the document. Ordinance number 4.2, an ordinance rezoning property for an approximate 2.08 acre parcel of property known as the Thornhill Educational Center, being 700 Leslie Avenue, Frankfort, Kentucky, more specifically described as PBA map number 74-12-9-7.0 from SG, which is government special, to PO, professional office district. Summary. This ordinance approves a zone map amendment for the 2.08 acre parcel of property known as the Thornhill Educational Center, being 700 Leslie Avenue, Frankfort, Kentucky, more specifically described as PVA map number 74-12-9-7.0 from SG to PO. Okay, do I have a motion concerning uh, ordinance 4.2? Move for approval. Uh, Mr. Turner, move for approval. Is that a second? Uh, Commissioner Hedden, second in the discussion. Call the roll. Mr. Wilder? Yes. Mr. Hedden? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Mr. May? Yes. Mayor Grant? Uh, yes, so ordinance 4.2 is approved. 4.3, an ordinance amending the City Code of Ordinances, Chapter 150, Building Regulations, Construction, Section 150.01, .01, Building Code, Subsections 150.01B2, 150.01 B3H and 150.01 B5 is hereby amended as indicated in this ordinance. Summary, this ordinance amends the city's code of ordinances, chapter 150, building regulations, construction sections 150.01 B2, 150.01 B3H and 150.01 B5 for the purpose of amending the zoning review, zoning permit fee, and fee for starting work without a permit for construction projects. Okay, do we have a motion pertaining to ordinance 4.3? Uh, 
Okay, so moved. Okay. Second. Commissioner May. Yes, second. <coughs> uh, Commissioner Wilder. Okay, call the roll. Commissioner Wilder. Yes. Commissioner Hedden. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Commissioner May. Yes. Mayor Grant. Uh, yes, so ordinance 4.3 is approved. 4.4, an ordinance appropriating the revenue to be received by the City of Frankfurt for fiscal year 2011-2012. Summary, this ordinance appropriates revenue to be received by the City of Frankfurt for fiscal year 2011-2012 in accordance with the budget submitted and hereby approved. I would like to point out that uh, pursuant to the request of the Board of Commissioners, the underlying document for this ordinance has been slightly revised to uh, delete any reference to push in the uh, to the push uh, agency uh, with respect to donations that are made to uh, nonprofit and other entities uh, however that reference to push and its deletion uh, did not require a change to the ordinance itself Okay. All right. Um, Mayor, if, yeah. if I may. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're looking at me. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm Please sorry. share a microphone. Um, in the city manager form of government, it's the city manager's responsibility to, to bring forth a balanced budget and present it to the commission. Um, and also, in the spirit of transparency this year, we have shared more data and, and detail of the budget than ever before um, I did bring forth my budget and um, reviewed it on uh, May 9th and then subsequently we had the first reading on May 23rd um, if it's will commission uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have we've, we've had quite a bit of discussion um, the budget uh, is, is rather uh, similar to last year's budget. We've made a lot of uh, uh, deferments. We have deferred purchasing capital equipment. Uh, we've deferred uh, COLA at the beginning of the year, which is cost of living uh, raises. And uh, department heads have, have worked very much like a team to uh, to back off some of their early requests. The first request of that we had of all of our departments was 1.4 more than our expected revenues and so we have trimmed those back in order to uh, come within the uh, estimated revenues for the year and one really significant change that we've made has been in the uh, area of health insurance we were experiencing uh, increases of three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollars per year in our health premiums, and we've been able to uh, adjust our health coverage uh, without slamming our employees. We still have a good health plan, and so I would uh, respectfully request uh, that we vote unless there's questions. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion for? Approval of uh, Ordinance uh, 4.4. So moved. Uh, Commissioner Turner, do we have a second? Uh, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and second it. I, I do have some questions and comments. Well, okay, but you got to second? Sure. Okay, then do you have any questions or comments? Um, I mean, my understanding is that we really are legally obligated to pass, you know, to pass a budget by, by the beginning of July anyway. Um, and so I, I, I do intend to, to vote for this, which says something, because this is the first budget I've, I've actually voted on the, in the affirmative for. I, I voted against both of our last two budgets. Um, uh, however, um, we said uh, a few months ago in regards to the, the health care changes that, that, or at least I said, and got general uh, nods of agreement that we didn't want to make these changes without hearing from the employees first um, and that hasn't formally happened um, but we have been uh, assured repeatedly that employees are across the board uh, fine with the changes and, and pretty copacetic and I've been hearing from a number of folks over the last 
uh, well, over the course of the last month or so. And my, my sense is that morale, um, at least among lower level staff, is really kind of at an all-time all -time low right now, or certainly lower than I've seen it. Uh, I know I've only been here for two and a half years now. But over the last couple of years, employees have been told that uh, they had to lose longevity pay and have to see these changes to health insurance. I agree, these changes are not nearly as drastic as they could have been. I think they are necessary for the long-term good of the city. But employees have been told that they have to uh, settle for either very meager COLAs or none at all. They've seen a uh, heavy reduction in their longevity pay um, with the longevity pay actually designed to be phased out. They've seen these changes in health care and their health care uh, premiums and coverage. And they, they and, and the public and the commission have been told that entire time that all, all this stuff is necessary because there simply isn't, isn't any money because the budget's so tight. And I think a lot of employees were pretty upset at the beginning of the month. At the beginning of the month, the commission found out that that hasn't been true at all for the last couple of years, that we've actually been running an average of a million dollars a year in surplus over the course of the last last couple of years this year and, and previous year and that uh, that fact wasn't uh, really made clear to the commission or to the public and in fact employees have been told over and over and over again that the money isn't there so then we find out that the money actually is there that the city's been bringing in a lot more money than anybody uh, realized and yet um, they're still not they're still only receiving a you know essentially a half percent COLA. I mean, a, a, you know, a one percent COLA to go into effect in January and still seeing these changes to health insurance. So in, <laughs> and a lot of employees are, you know, they, and I've heard, I've really, I've heard from uh, quite a few people, I'd say, I'd say at least 20 over the course of the, the last month or so. And some folks ha get the impression that the, um, that they and the commission have been misled over the last couple of years about the, the financial state of the city. And others are under the impression that the commission um, has actually been complicit in misleading the public and employees about the true financial uh, state of the city. Uh, of course, it's my position that the former is true, that the, that the commission actually was, uh, actually did believe that things were as tight as we were told they were over the last couple of years and that we, we certainly weren't trying to to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. But in light of the fact that, that the situation is actually very different than we were led to believe, um, we need to go ahead and pass this budget. But I just to give everybody a heads up, I, I'd like to go ahead and request a budget amendment um, next month to to amend this budget to make allowances for uh, at least just to offset the changes in, in health coverage, but to to make an amendment to um, either bring the COLA into effect earlier uh, and or raise it to two percent instead. Um, I do get the, 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 the word on the street, the rumors around town is that lots of folks are about to leave. Maybe that's true, maybe it isn't. But I know that folks are really unhappy, and I can't blame them, frankly. I mean, after being told for two years that there isn't money, there isn't money, there isn't money, and then we find that there's been money the entire time, that's, I think we need to do something to make things right. But we do need to go ahead and pass this budget now. Um, Commissioner Hidden. And I, I, too, have heard a lot from, from several employees um, with their morale being, being down and you know, you don't want to, you want to, financially, you say you want to keep, keep going for property rate, you know, property taxes at that 4%. That way we can keep it, we can keep the income coming in. You lose that compound interest. <coughs> Our employees lose their compound interest by not getting their 1%, 2%, or 3% raise every year. So I, I totally agree with, with doing an amendment to the budget. Anybody else want to come in? I just <clears throat> I have a couple comments, uh, Mayor, if, you, if I may. 
I do uh, also echo uh, the other two commissioners' concerns about uh, increasing uh, the cost of living adjustment, and, and I'm certainly open to discussing that uh, next month uh, as well. Uh, but right now, I just want to take an opportunity to thank our city manager for his hard work on this budget. Uh, Fred was thrown in to the city commission on day one that we took office and has hit the ground running. Um, I'm certainly uh, happy that he's our city manager and proud to call him my friend and I'm just glad that, that we were able to get through this and thanks a lot Fred and thanks to the rest of the staff and I, I know that the employees are taking a hit with the health insurance and it is the goal and, and um, will of this commission that we will address that. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, thanks, Mayor. Um, I too want to thank all the uh, well, city manager for grabbing this budget and taking control and jumping in without having done one of these before. This is your first one you've had to deal with on a city level. Of course, you've got experience at the county level. I know uh, quite a bit of difference, though, isn't it? Um, and thanks to all the department heads for all the tough decisions that you all made to make this balance. And as always, I think I always made the commitment that I always supported um, as much of an increase in salaries as we could for those of our folks, um, city employees who work on the front line, who are the ones that really are the undergirding of this uh, organization we call city government. Because without all these folks that are staying with us for so long, it doesn't really matter who's sitting up here because uh, they're the ones, you all are sitting in the back of the room and all the folks who work in your departments are the ones who really make it work. I learned that a long time ago and so I'm always willing to, uh, I think when I was mayor I always tried to, we always tried to get a 5% raise and we did, I know we did a couple of fours, we did a five and we had to go down to three a couple of times but for the most part we were able to do some, some decent raises and unfortunately the last several years, I don't know how, I can't remember how many years back we go, we um, haven't been able to do that, but uh, if, if we can, can find money to increase um, the cost of living allowance, I'm certainly always glad to do that. I may not have been on record for that from, from day one and hope that we can find that to do for our folks. And I know that you've given up some equipment in this budget and we've got a hiring freeze and we can't fill some vacancies. Um, I hope the, I guess my immediate short-term goal is that we don't lose any, any folks because of lack of what they see as support in their, in their salary. So I would, I would be happy to look with the new figures to see if, if that, what that amount can be and hopefully it can be as much as we can stand to do at this point. So are, are we just doing comments or are we going to, we're just doing comments, I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm make a, we all have one shot at this. I guess, I guess I should make a few comments. Um, when, uh, in 2009, when uh, Commissioner Wilder and I came on, uh, January 2009, and uh, that's the first budget we had to, had to work with, 